Hello and welcome to a short video looking at the differences between Analyst Notebook version 8 and version 9 for those of you who are just about to upgrade or those who already have. So first thing we're going to do is remind you of the version 8 interface so we can explain how it's changed in version 9. As you remember in version 8 you had the menu bar, toolbars and the task pane down the right hand side of your screen. And one of the difficulties was knowing where to look for certain functions. They can be in several places and then sometimes only in one. In version 9 all of that has been combined into one place and the idea is it's all been logically arranged to help you find what you're looking for whereas before you may have had difficulty. Now let's have a quick look at the ribbon to get an idea of how it works. First of all all across the top here you've got your tabs. The Home tab is where you'll start creating your charts. For example, you may be wanting to start a project from scratch. You're probably used to using the palettes over on the right hand side. So I can just click here and start dragging and dropping entities onto the chart. Now, the pane on the right has a new standard feature that it can be undocked. So if you have a second screen, you can put it on the other side. Or if you'd rather it was somewhere else, you can move it to where you please. With all these screens that are dockable, when I move them, I get a little icon up here in the middle, assisting me with docking the pane to a particular part of the screen. You might be importing, so we've got the importer here, and you can bring back the traditional pane if you want to. The next thing you might have noticed on the ribbon is the way some icons are bigger than others. The most frequently used or more important functions are bigger. You'll also notice they have labels underneath to help you and if you hover over it you'll get a tooltip explaining what it does. If you use iBase you use connected sources where you can go to display the data sources pane on the right hand side very much like you used to in version 8. Now let's take a look at some of the other tabs just to get a feel for them. The arrange tab is where you'll get all your layouts and again the key icons are usually bigger. The next thing to look at is the style pane and what you'll find here are all the things you'd expect about styles but there are some nice quick accelerators too to make your life easier. So we'll just zoom in on a part of the chart by using the key zoom functions at the bottom of the page. So I'd like to go to actual size and I'd also like to move my chart so I'm just going to click on drag chart drag who I want into the middle and then go back to using the mouse pointer. I'm also going to change what the entity looks like. So for example I like using icon frames. I might want to change the font and similarly if I choose a link I get all my link options available. So if I want to emphasize that one for whatever reason, I can. I can also show whether it's confirmed or unconfirmed. Behind the scenes, I may have some data I'd like to display. For example, I have date and time behind my link, which I'd like to show. Again, things we could do before, but they're much easier and user friendly now. The next tab we'll look at is Analyze. One of the things I used to use an awful lot in version 8 was the search bar, which is down the bottom of the screen. To get it in version 9, all you need to do is click search on the ribbon. You can then choose if you would like to dock or undock the bar. If you're looking for a particular person, for example, just type in their name and away it goes. One of the features that a lot of people have been using are filters and histograms. This displayed on the right hand pane. In version 9, once you've clicked on the option, it brings up the section as before. You can then start choosing the things you'd like to look at, for example entity type. In the very latest versions, it has been renamed bar charts and histograms. Select has a lot of nice features as well.
One of the most common things you'll want to do is to choose things by the entity type or link type you used when creating the chart. Now I can easily select my item type, for example all the males. If I also want to select the females as well, I can. Now I'd like to rearrange the link labels for the telephone calls. At the moment, they're overlapping and maybe a little bit too close together. I can start to use the new function to easily select the telephone calls. And now if I go to the Arrange tab, I can arrange my link labels and it automatically moves them so they don't overlap too much. Now let's imagine I'm about to produce the final version of my chart. I'd need to go to Publish. One of the frustrations was you would always have to go to Page Setup to make sure it fitted on the page. But now I can just use Best Fit. The chart is now ready to print. So far I've mainly talked about the ribbon, so now I'll talk about the Quick Access Toolbar in the top left hand corner. It's where I can do common things like make new charts, open charts, save and print. But what I find particularly helpful is that I can customise it. So for example, you can put the layout tools onto your quick access toolbar. To do this, you click the option button on the left. You choose what you want using the buttons in the middle of the dialog to add. Click OK then there they are. Finally, let's put a number of these things together to create a nice workflow using some of these new options. So on this chart, I have some commodities being passed around. They're the blue links. What I'd like to do is to put them into a timeline chart using the dates and times behind them. From the Select tab, choose Item Type, Commodity Transfer, and then copy to a new timeline chart. Now we have my chart ready to go. In summary, in version 8 we were used to using menus, the toolbar and the task pane. In version 9 that's all been combined into the ribbon. It's arranged logically in terms of the tabs and the options on those tabs. In each one, the bigger ones tend to be the most important. If you're not sure what one does, hover over it and you'll get a tooltip. There are also accelerators, for example the style changes we saw before. And finally, we have the quick access toolbar, which we can customise with the new features that we want most. If you found this video useful, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, you can visit our website for further information about the i2 courses that we offer.